Hello, my friend, and welcome to the 580th episode of the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. Today, we're talking about farms over funnels. Uh, a little bit. Uh, Justin Brook is a returning guest, a longtime friend. I've known him uh, many years. He came on the Sales Podcast, oh, where was it? Episode 107. So his life has changed a good bit since then. The industry has changed. He is a PPC expert. Uh, he has courses. Uh, the main course is at Ad Skills. Uh, so we talk about that. I'm a member of that. I have learned from him. Uh, had his people on, John Belcher. Uh, so just, I've known him a long time. He's a straight shooter and he is extremely experienced. Uh, in paid traffic. He's a big fan of Google, and we talk about where Google fits in, how Facebook fits in, where you should start, how to leverage uh, the pros and cons of each of those platforms. Uh, we talk a little bit about YouTube, uh, but he has made a, a change in his personal life. We get into that. Uh, that's the farms over funnels. Uh, he's very uh, open about the things he's working on, uh, why he moved, um, his conversion uh, to Christianity. He's been blogging about that daily uh, for well over a year. So just a laid-back dude, smart dude. Um, so you are in for a treat. Um, I am back from my 30-year reunion, and I am getting old. Can't party. Can't sleep. Can't sleep when I travel. Who, can you can you sleep when you travel? Man, stayed at a friend's house, nice house. My own room, nice bed, could not sleep. Ugh. But Air Force One, amen. It rained and was cold, as it always is for the class of 92, but we persisted. So it was all good. It was good seeing those folks. Uh, so after two weddings this summer, a reunion, I skipped my jujitsu camp. <clears throat> I'm not skipping next year. So back in the swing of things, uh, 12 Weeks to Peak is running. It's free, 12weekstopeak.com. Go get you some of that. Okay, I've mentioned the Founders Card, uh, founders.thesalespodcast.com. Save money on everything that you buy for business, for travel. Um, I've saved a lot on a lot of things. I've saved on my Shopify, or I keep saying Shopify. Uh, I have used Shopify. Uh, on my Stripe merchant account. So those things can add up. Goodness gracious. Uh, saved on my Bose, my two Bose speakers. Saved on Hertz, Marriott, airline travel. So check them out. Founders.thesalespodcast.com. If you want to write Mo better today, today. And, you know, so LinkedIn, you get all these crappy messages. And most of them are automated. And I know they're automated because I've got a dash and a phone icon in my name. And those come through. And so I know it's a mail merge. And they're just not very good pitches. And I actually unfriended and unfollowed a lady that had messaged me. And But I guess once communication is established, the, the messages still go through. So she had sent me several. And I just said, look, stop automating your messages. How, how's that for feedback? Because... Some of, the, some of these messages are like, are you getting my messages? Ugh. And so I replied and said, basically, try being a human. And we had a decent conversation. She admitted it, apologized, admits that she's not good at sales and marketing. She's very good at what she does. And that's true for most people. Most entrepreneurs, most salespeople, they're, they're good at what they do. But salespeople are not great at marketing. A lot of salespeople aren't great at sales, right? They just, you're hustling, you're working hard, you're grinding, you're getting it done through effort, but not through repeatable, proven talent and tactics. Uh, but most entrepreneurs, they're good at woodworking or computer programming or chiropractic care. They're not good at sales and marketing. So... I say all that to mention John Buchan, his charm offensive. If you go to drunk.thesalespodcast.com, get some of his um, proven templates. They are different, okay? But hey, the definition of insanity is doing the same stupid stuff over and over again, expecting different results. Check them out, 
Okay, I've known him for years. I had him on the podcast. He reached me through one of his templates. Uh, so it's good. All right. So you gotta you gotta change some things up because uh, you're not doing yourself any good. If you use WordPress, if you use funnels, if you're tired of the complexity of click funnels and WordPress and everything else, but you want to get, but you still want to stay on the WordPress platform, check out Drop Funnels dot salespodcast.com i had them on the crm sushi podcast um, had them on jordo on the sales podcast great product super affordable um, so avail yourself of that okay and uh, i promise you you will like it if you want to buy me a cup of coffee donate dot the sales podcast.com all right if you want to buy me a rolex i mean you know send whatever you want it's i'm not too proud to beg all right if I helped you, you love me, love my kids, go ahead, donate.thesalespodcast.com. Now let's bring on Justin Brooke. Justin Brooke, Ad Skills, founder, farmer, new Christian. Welcome back to the Sales Podcast, man. How the heck are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. <laughs> Technically a new man, you know, uh, since the last time I was on here, right? So all new, dude. So I'm looking back. You were on episode 107. This one is going to be somewhere around episode 585. So uh, you know, we we slept once or twice since then. Okay. You've been you've been grinding them out, man. I I got your old picture here from 107. Uh you were a little heavier. Uh, yeah. still had the short hair, no beard though, you know? So I don't know, man. Like I see a lot of your pretty face in the old picture. So I don't, I don't know, man, don't, but the beard like makes you look rugged, kind of Abraham Lincoln esque. So I don't know. I don't know which is best. I, I am uh, in between haircuts and hiding from my barber at the moment. So, <laughs> so, you know what, whatever your wife likes do that. Okay. Keep the yes, beard. Sir. Don't keep the beard, grow the hair. Don't grow the hair. So that's why I don't have a mustache. I would prefer to have a mustache. I, I would like a beard. My wife does not like a beard. So I, I, I'm a, I've, I've made it about three weeks and then a beard's got to go. So yes. the challenges of a uh, of married life. So, man, you've had a, an interesting history. So back in the day, so the episode was titled $2 a day to a million dollars on Facebook ads. Is that still viable? Is Facebook still around, man? Should we even do Facebook? It's all it's all TikTok now, right? <laughs> Amazon's <laughs> coming up too, man. Amazon Woo. and Pinterest ads are really uh, hearing a lot of chatter about Amazon ads and, and Pinterest ads. And I knew it wouldn't be long before Amazon ads. Um, I think they're the one big competitor to Google. Um, but anyways, is it still possible? $2 a day is a bit of a stretch today. I would say $5 a day is probably the floor and really to get that same level of result that I was getting, you probably need to be about $10 a day, $10 a day. You're, you're going to be able to get started in just about any market, you know, and, and do all right. And that sounds uh, honestly, it sounds unbelievable. <laughs> right, right. Well, let me, just getting started, you know, sure. uh, it, you're, you're not going to take $10 a day and become a millionaire, you know, but $10 a day is the, you know, I mean, the thing that changed my whole life, um, you know, back in the day when I was learning from Russell Brunson back in 2007, as an, in, as an intern, I realized I had this paradigm shift of like what advertising was my whole life. I always saw advertising as expensive. It was magazine ads. It was TV ads. It was billboards. It was things you had to have a lot of money for and you had to ask somebody for permission. But then comes along Google ads. And now today it's all the different ads, you know, uh, but it was like for five dollars a day you know for me it was a hundred bucks you know that's how i saw it i didn't see it as two dollars a day until i became a copywriter you know but it was like for a hundred bucks in my bedroom i can tell the whole world about my product and that was yeah and i didn't have to ask anybody permission you know just create my account enter my email enter my credit card write a headline drop a link and i'm telling the whole world about my product for under 100 bucks that to me was mind blowing and changed my life. And I've, I've since changed thousands of others, you know, because of it. Yeah. 
um, I guess the, I don't know if it's the dirty little secret, at least it's just the, the truth is that you still need to have a product. You have right. to be able to fulfill. You've got to be able to take payments. You've got to store these people's contact info somewhere. Hopefully stay in touch with them to get repeat sales and, and, and orders and referrals and testimonials. But it, is that just, you just figure it out along the way? You know, if somebody's brand new to marketing, you know, their local business, um, you know, I always pick a chiropractor. Everybody knows a chiropractor, you know, can a chiropractor start spending $10 a day? I mean, because they already have an existing business. They have a phone number, they have a website, you know, they probably have an assistant or an office manager, you know, is it just start spending a little bit of money, do a little bit of trial and error and figure out what works? Yeah, actually, I just recently, or actually last year, during the whole storm of everything, um, don't want to mention the words just in case wherever you're putting this, you know, um, but when all that stuff was going down, uh, our town got a grant and it was two-sided. You know, one, they wanted to improve more outdoor, all the restaurants in our town, I should say, got a grant. Uh, so they all of a sudden had money to spend on outdoor dining and the internet you know the you know the government our city wanted them to improve their ability to sell online and so they hired me and my wife to come around and, and show them how to do that there was 12 restaurants and the first thing we showed them was how to spend five dollars a day on google ads like our coffee shop you know they're running an ad coffee near me you know for five dollars a day you know and they're bringing in new eyeballs the pizza shop pizza near me you know the italian shop you know same thing you know we just showed them how to create these little five dollar a day campaigns one of them they're like we're so busy i don't want more customers and i was like well what about hiring all the companies in town seem to be struggling with hiring would you like you know more interviews you know and he was like oh yeah yeah if you could show me how to hire people that would be you know now we're talking and so we did jobs available near me for five dollars a day you know so there's there's one of those little five dollar ten dollar a day campaigns for everyone uh, it might just take us five or ten minutes to figure out what one fits for them yeah isn't that funny oh i got enough business like what <laughs> it's like do you think it'll stay like that forever you know and like but yeah they do or they they just don't think of how to scale um I'm in a really small town and they don't really need ads. There's like five restaurants. So, um, and, and he's like the only guy that does social media. So legitimately he was right. Um, but me and you were like open another restaurant then, you know, but they just don't around here. They just don't think like that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, back then when you came on, it was Facebook you were talking about. But is that because it was just timely back then? Because you cut your teeth on on Google, right? Google Display Network and, and that whole world. Yeah. Cut my teeth on Google. Still big Google fanboy, you know, and rightly so. They're the largest advertising network in the world. They also have YouTube ads, search, display, shopping, you know, so um, fanboy for a reason. Uh, but Facebook is also a monster you know my favorite combination is google search with facebook retargeting i think that one two punch combo cannot be beaten even in today with all the other stuff that's out there but you know you you take a, a good clean intent based search traffic you get that nice clean traffic from the click in google and then those people are retargeted in facebook so you can follow up that's awesome. It's it's phenomenal. Facebook still, you know, has a, a seat at the table. They're still the second largest advertising network. Um, it's just their CPMs have gone up. Their rules are crazy. You know, I, I just don't, me personally, I don't like to play the Facebook game. I want to set up an ad and let it be running, you know, for a long time. And that's the world of Google, you know, the world of Facebook, you need to be feeding it new ad creative every day. Really, if you want to be at the best, you need to be feeding it ad creative every day. 
if you want to just kind of, you know, exist and, and do all right, you know, new ad creative once a week, but it is not a network where you're going to set up your ads. It, it is not a set it and forget it ad network like Google can be. So why is that? Um, I mean, obviously Google's huge, but I mean, Facebook is huge. Uh, why, why are they so different? Because it's, it's feed based. Uh, it's also, you know, people don't like this word because they have feelings about Facebook. It's interruption based. It's, you know, it's, it's not a, I'm not calling it interruption based. You know, there is intent based ads and then there is interruption based ads, intent based ads. Um, those are ads where somebody had an intent and so they went and did something and that thing that they did triggered the ads. That's Google search. You know, they wanted to learn how to, you know, cure their anxiety symptoms. And so they went on to Google and they typed in, you know, treat anxiety or cure anxiety symptoms or whatever. That's an intent based ad. An interruption based ad is kind of the rest of the world which is, you know, you're browsing a feed or you're watching a TV show or you're listening to a radio and and all of a sudden an ad appears while you're doing something else. And so that's why you need fresh new creative because it's also feed based. And so they cannot keep showing the same ad to you over and over again, whereas intent based you're not going to see the ad over and over again. You're going to see it the moment you have the intent and that's it. And that's why you can kind of set it and forget it loosely all right you still got to ch check on your headlines still got to make sure nothing's going wrong but you don't need constant new fresh creative because it's not like a feed where you're hammering the person with the same ad over and over again mm -hmm. and that's uh, the biggest difference and that's what fucking google yeah and that's where the retargeting comes in because you you hit them on google with the intent and then boom they're back goofing off on facebook and they see your same ad and that, that repetition is what finally gets them over the edge, finally click and maybe opt in. Right. Right. Everybody already, you know, I don't have to sell anybody on Facebook lookalikes or, you know, similar audiences or, you know, retargeting. Everybody's already doing that stuff. Most of the people doing Facebook ads, they already do that. Love it. Well, what I'm saying is imagine that. But now you're not just retargeting any traffic. You're retargeting intent based traffic from right. Google. That's a whole nother ball game. It's a whole nother level of ROI. And you you mix the the best, it's the right tools at the right time. And you just it's it's not a one plus one equals two, it's a one plus one equals eleven type of situation. Mm -hmm. Uh so if somebody is new to paid traffic, um, where should they start? Should they should they start with the ten dollars a day on Facebook? Should they try to start on Google? You know, if someone's brand new, you know, what I would do is you you probably have some piece of content, you know, whether you've been doing a blog or there's a page on your website that people like or you like, or there's a social media post that's done well, you know, look for some si sort of signal that this thing that I'm going to promote has done better than all the other things that I've done. You know, an example of that is, you know, recently we uploaded seven new or six new carousel posts on Instagram. That's the ones where you can swipe over and kind of read like an article via images. Well, we uploaded six of them. Most of them got like 23 to 27 likes. And then one of them got 126 likes. That's the one we're going to put $5 a day behind. You know, there's some sort of a signal that the audience really resonates with that. And so it's kind of a do more of what's working, less of what's not working. And you put $5 a day behind that thing. It's already working well. The market's already resonating with it. So it's going to just perform that much better with a little bit of juice behind it. That's where I start people off. So, all right. So you're skipping a few things because, you know, you're just too damn smart and you just <laughs> have done this forever. So somebody has got a, a blog post, let's say that's, that's done well. Um, they run an ad, ten dollars a day, driving people. Uh, you're saying drive them to an ungated piece of content, right? Like, hey, basically trying to establish themselves as as an expert, get some mind share of, get some eyeballs of ideal people. Yeah, yeah. It's it's 
just getting them to go through the motions, you know, of, okay, I need a link and then I need to figure out where to, you know, cause I'm just recommending they hit the little boost post button. You know, I'm not recommending they go make an ads manager account or a Facebook business. Oh, you're saying account. take an existing article or something they put on Facebook and just boost that. Ideally, you know, if they don't have that yet, then I'm going to just have them take something and, and put it up there. And I just want them to go. Through it. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I was thinking like a blog post, but yeah, you're saying they post something on Facebook. It gets a lot of engagement. Boost that just to get some eyeballs. Or Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and then what? Are you hoping they go to your bio? Hey, link in bio and maybe... Maybe they're running a promotion, ten percent off new orders or something, and 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 start to monetize that. Yeah, I would assume that you know that they have something on their website to capture a follower or to get a sale. You know, um, they would have you know when they were building their website, they probably would have come up with some you know like here's some action I want you to take. And so what we typically see is we drive people to a blog post, and then the first and. 20 30 percent of the people usually click the home button they read the blog post they're like this this was good like what what's this website you know what do they do so they click the home button most people don't know how to make a good home page so then we typically see them click the about button next and this is from thousands of websites you know over a decade of doing this you know the data that we have you know that's kind of the the path that people take and so if you do have a decent homepage and you have some form of lead capture, uh, most people would do like a get 10% off or, you know, get my free ebook, you know, or, you know, get a free demo of my product, any, any of those type of things on your homepage, then of that 20% that go to your, your page, you're going to get about 10% of them, you know? And so it's a start. We get them to a blog post. And the reason why we use a blog post is because it's very, um, it's like a Trojan horse, you know, there's not a whole lot of friction. It, it has good CTR because it doesn't look like an ad. And so it's just going to deliver a good experience to the person. It's a good first impression, get them on your website. And then what we find is a lot of people, if they do that, um, customers will be like, oh yeah, I found you. And it's like, eh, no, we, we engineered that to, you know, yeah, you found us, but like kind of on purpose. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, yeah. it's a much better customer when they feel like they found you. So, what comprises a good homepage? What comprises a good homepage? Boy, isn't that the million dollar question? You know, how many blog posts have you and I read about that? And okay, know? what what makes a bad web homepage? <laughs> <laughs> a bad homepage. Um, a bad homepage is it's about everything. You know, I think a lot of people they think their homepage is this like catch all. It's like, I'm going to show, here's all my podcast episodes. Here's my last three newsletters. Here's my last three blog posts. Uh, you can enter our email list here. You can get 20% off there. You know, it's like this catch-all page. And that's a horrible homepage. You know, a homepage should explain what you do and how to get started. That's it. You know, it, what you do and then how to get started. And then... You know, if you're a little bit better, you might have some credibility boosters on there, some testimonials, you know, whatnot. I love the way uh, Neil Patel, I don't know if he's changed it recently. I haven't checked in on him, um, but Neil Patel for a while was on these really short home pages. And uh, I know that dude tests a lot. And so I love his really simple, it's like a headline opt-in box and that's about it on his home pages uh those are really effective i don't love those for um they don't have a whole lot more use you know behind that but you know they for what it's worth they're really effective yeah but justin i do a whole lot man i mean i need to tell everybody how great i am in all of my certifications uh okay. and show them how I ride a unicycle and can juggle. I mean, why should I limit myself? Uh, you can do all of the, my, my favorite phrase, and we, we use this with our kids. We use this with our customers. You, you can do all of that. You can do all the things. You just can't do them right now. <laughs> 
So how does somebody know what the main focus is? Split testing? I mean, what do you yeah. do? So when I design a web a website, um, for me, I have this like one ad, one page, one goal. You know, I'm, I'm trying to like keep it very simple. And so for us, when it comes to our website, ad skills, you know, we're the, the goal is to get you on a free class. And every page of that website should try to offer you a free class some way or another. That's what that's what we want to do. The whole website's purpose is to give you a free class because we believe that when you take a free class, you're going to be like, man, this was good. I want more. You know, we call it the chocolate, you know, the ch chocolate cookie method. You know, you go to the grocery store and they're like, oh, hey, you want a free cookie? You, you, you eat it. You're like, that's delicious. Next thing you know, you're buying three boxes, you know, and so kind of the same principle. So when we build a website, it's one goal. What is that one goal that we have? How do we want them to start? And then every page is pushing towards that goal. And um, how do you know what that goal is? it changes, you know, you start with something, your, your best guess, a hypothesis, you know, okay, we know that this market, you know, they want this and uh, the best first part of that would be a free demo or a free class or a free trial or a free packet or whatever. And you just start there. And then you just, you know, like you said, you split test, you try a couple of options and you see what works best over time. Well, you know, I mean, I thought you were smart, man. Look, I'm yeah. I'm on Apple right now and they have iPhones and they have AirPods and watch and watch and watch. Oh, and then fitness, gift cards, cards, oh, and TV shows. So you know what, Justin? I Apple doesn't do one thing, one thing, one thing. Yeah, I mean, if you if you got a few billion dollars laying around, do all that. Absolutely. No problem. Do it. You should. <laughs> but if you got like 10 bucks. Yeah, maybe you should listen to me. Maybe narrow the focus. Because <laughs> you know that's what people will say. Apple doesn't do it that way, or McDonald's or... doesn't do it that way. Yeah, I'm like, are you McDonald's? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh man, very nice. So you know that the, the word that cannot be mentioned, right? Because we're living such a free world, and and nobody's spying on us and listening, and yeah. Looking for keywords. I call, it the, uh, I call it the cootie storm. The cootie storm. Yeah. Well, hey, that's probably going to get get indexed. Um, all the variations. Um, have things changed since then in in marketing and advertising? Yeah, there's more competition. Um, it was it was weird. It, it was um, so I I living in when I used to live in Florida. I'm in Tennessee now. I used to always think it was a little weird that the storm shutter sellers, you know, the guys selling like the hurricane panels and things like that, their success is kind of dictated by other people's fear. And, you know, like something bad is happening. Like they're winning when, you know, everybody else's world is coming to an end kind of a thing, you know? Um, and then we experienced that, uh, you know, in 2020, because the whole world all of a sudden, had to sell online you know everybody there, there wasn't a choice it was like you either go out of business or you figure out how to sell online and we saw you know in our town antique stores are like all the rage like people come here from all over for their antique stores and those people they just they couldn't they couldn't uh they didn't know how to get their ebay on or the etsy on or whatever their amazon and stores just went out of business like crazy. And so we had a huge boom of success because all of a sudden everybody needed to learn how to do Google ads and Facebook ads, TikTok ads and stuff like that. And so it was a bit weird, you know, having success uh, through other people's like clamoring. And um, but, you know, what, do, what, do we, what am I even bringing this up for? What I bring this up for is the whole world is trying to sell online. Uh, the internet is the big show now, you know, the TV, uh, 2017 is when the internet crossed over the TV as the world's largest advertising medium. So this was already coming for a long time. And then 2020 just, just skyrocketed, you know? And so there's a way more competition than there ever was. However, that being said, 
there's a whole lot of really bad competition, you know? So uh, there uh, it's great because these ad networks have a lot of money now. So they're releasing lots of new features. There's great uh, artificial intelligence things and machine learning things. And it's, it's a great, great day to be an advertiser um it's like the world is your oyster kind of uh, a moment for us as digital advertisers but uh you know there is a lot of competition but if you're just like just a little bit better than the rest you're a lot bit better yeah cool um man how did you make the transition from you know, you were interning, like working for free or maybe low cost for Russell. And then you started doing things for others. Uh, and then boom, you made this transition to ad skills. Um, and do you even do like any private consulting anymore or is it growing ad skills? I, I do private consulting. Um, I'm pretty picky with it cause I just, uh, not, you know, conceited or anything, you know, I just don't have a whole lot of time for that. You know, I try to keep my schedule pretty empty. Um, and then I also just want to make sure it's fun for both of us and then it's going to be a win, you know? Um, so yeah, uh, I, I do private consulting. Um, so the, the trajectory was I started out as an affiliate marketer, 2005, 2007, I hook up with Russell Brunson. He kind of shows me how to build a funnel I bought resell rights to a product. I didn't, it wasn't my own product. It was resell rights to a product that was teaching Joomla, which is like a WordPress competitor. It still exists, but far, far down the list of options available today. So it was a little tutorial video series. That was my, my entry into the digital info business kind of thing. Started selling that, um, did pretty well with that for a while. And then kind of tapped out that market. It was just a very small market. And so I sold that website. People, I started talking in the forums. You know, people were wondering how I was getting all this traffic, how I was doing well, Google ads and things like that. And so I started, uh, you know, doing traffic. Uh, And then what happened, the transition, there's a couple of key moments. So I sold that business that was doing well. Forgot to build another business. So by the way, when you sell one, if you want to continue making money, you will have to start another business. Um, All of a sudden I realized there was only a thousand dollars in my bank account and it wasn't refilling. And I was like, oh yeah, I have to quickly build a business. So that was when I hooked up with Rich Sheffrin and uh, started doing traffic for him. And we started off just on a couple of projects. He would hire me here and there to do this and that. And then he brought me on full time to be his traffic guy. And that was when, like when I became his traffic guy, everybody wanted to hire. And you when know, was I didn't that? No, I was building. A team. That would have been 2010. Yeah. In between 2010, 2011, um, became his traffic guy. And then all of a sudden everybody wanted me to become his traffic guy. Cause he was, you know, he, it was, it was super smart. Because even so, if we won, if we had a good ad campaign that was going, it was a good ad campaign. If it was a bad ad campaign, he would then teach it as a lesson to all of his members. Like, look, you know, here's here's some mistakes we made and what we learned from it and how we're so like he couldn't lose, you know. And so it gave me the first time I, I had ever had, you know, the budget, the products, the resources to really master the craft. Everybody wanted to hire me, started an agency called I Am Scalable. That was when, you know, I brought on Russell Brunson, Ryan Dice, uh, spoke on Dan Kennedy's stage, worked with GKIC for, you know, we did work for a lot of people. Then the the agency business, we did well, you know, we crossed the seven figure line. We had all the biggest clients. So speaking on all the best stages, I just didn't love that life anymore. I I didn't, uh, we were traveling at the time and we were in Bali and I'm, you know, staying up till one, two o'clock in the morning, trying to do meetings with GKIC and as great as that is, I just couldn't handle that life anymore. And so that's when we started the info product and we started uh, ad skills, but it wasn't ad skills at that time. It kind of became ad skills around 2015, 2016. Uh, but we started, we, we sold our first course called media buying masters made $48,000 in one weekend. And we were like, Oh, maybe we should, maybe we should do this again. <laughs> and uh, that slowly became ad skills. Yeah. I remember when you made that transition. Um, Cause I, 
I knew you, I followed you. Um, but I am scalable. Yeah. That's like, how we worked up. Yeah. You were calling me about, uh, like the differences between infusion soft and HubSpot or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's cool. It's cool to see your transition. And then, um, why you leave Florida, man? Isn't that a great state? I mean, Tennessee's a great state, but Florida's a great state. Florida is a great state. You know, the beach is amazing. It's just, it's too hot for me, bro. I just, I can't do it, man. Yeah. September, September right now. See, everybody always thinks August is the hottest month, but August beats you down. And then you realize you still have September to get through. And it's just, I just, I couldn't do another September in Florida, man. I just couldn't do it. I tell you what, I've, I've lived here in Southern California for 18 years and we're, we're a bit inland, you know, and we've got a, a little mountain range between us and the ocean. So we're technically a desert mm. and the weather has changed in 18 years. And I know I've, I'm a meteorologist, man, I'm a degreed meteorologist in the air force. Um, and we've had like record heat, uh, this summer, um, humid, you know, you're like human, like we got a storm yesterday. Although I was a, from a spinoff from a tropical depression that hit Mexico, but yeah, dude, I'm tired of being hot. <laughs> like, and I'm in California. <laughs> yeah. This oh. morning, I took my dog for a walk. It was 57 degrees out. It was just, you know, you must be up at altitude a little bit, huh? I am. Yeah. We live in Roan mountain, Tennessee and, uh, legitimately on a mountain here so we're we're like between 25 and 3,000 feet so you can hear the banjos playing and, and start your defenses uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're coming honey assume the defensive position <laughs> uh but and you got a chunk of land though right you've been doing you're doing some farming i'm i mean i've been following it's so what what led you to that yeah, I'm kind of, you know, pushing this message of like farms over funnels right now. You know, funnels are great. You know, they're awesome. Sales funnels. Love them. Make money, you know. Uh, but I experienced for my first time, it was actually when we were traveling, uh, we were in Bali. And like there was times when you just couldn't buy chicken. And to me as an American, I was like, what do you mean? You know, I'm at the grocery store. Why is there no chicken here? You know, what, what, what do you mean you don't have milk today? You know, um, just so. And then when all the stuff happened and I went to my own grocery store here and there was no chicken, I was like, oh, I know what this is. You know, I know what people do when, when this happens, because I'd been in another country. I'd been in a third world country where food security wasn't guaranteed you know you couldn't just go pick out strawberry cashew milk if you wanted strawberry cashew milk that day you know um and so that i wouldn't say it scared me but it just kind of like oh okay i need to take some measures and so we did we started building a little garden in our backyard and then we realized like okay it's cute that you've grown some, you know, I got some jalapenos. I got a bell pepper. You know, I, grew, I had one bell pepper. I had awesome spinach and romaine lettuce. But like, if you grow all of that and you do phenomenal at it, you maybe grew about 600 calories, you know? And so you, you're going to do well for lunch, you know, but then what are you going to do after lunch? You know, um, and so, you know, started thinking about, okay, how do I, how do I actually create calories, you know, sustainable calories, you know, that we could depend on and then went through a health transition, you know, became a born again believer and, you know, lost 112 pounds, but on this huge health journey and uh, been trying to eat natural, been trying to, what does the Bible tell that we should eat, you know, and, and everybody can go on their own journeys of that, you know, and, but I just believe we should be eating real foods and, um, trying to get real foods can be kind of hard, you know, it's like, uh, the trying to get the organics and do you trust them? And, you know, how do you know that they're free range? Anyways, I don't want to get into all that stuff. So I just started growing my own stuff. I, I bought a farm. I got, um, you know, we, we have more than 10 acres. I, I've been learning, uh, cause we are internet marketers and we just ask each other, you know, Oh, what do you, what's your run rate? What, What's your burn rate? What's your conversion rate? We're, we're used to all those things, but I've learned here locally, like asking somebody how much land they have is, uh, it's fighting words. You know, that's, uh, that's like, uh, that's like asking them how much you got in your bank, you know, or what's yeah. your passport, you know? Um, 
but yeah, you know, we, we, we've got, uh, we've got 16 acres here. I'm not too shy about it. Uh, we got 16 acres. Wish I would have bought a lot less trying to tame 16 acres in the mountain is a lot. We've got chickens. We grow potatoes. Uh, we're into mushrooms and, um, but yeah, like if you grow spinach, potatoes are super easy. Anybody could grow potatoes on their porch. You know, it's very easy. If you look into it, you know, get, go to Amazon, look up potato bags. You get these little 10 gallon bags, grow potatoes, super simple. And so, if, yeah, if you've got, you know, spinach, lettuce, potatoes, and a couple of chickens, now you've got an actual, like you can put together some meals and, and have a real meal every day of, uh, of real real food, wholesome food. You knew that you didn't spray anything on there. You know what the chickens ate, you know, you know, so that's just kind of the journey we're on today and uh, farms over funnels, because I promise you uh, when it comes down to it, you're going to want your potatoes and your, your eggs a whole lot more than you're going to want your sales funnel. Yeah. I saw that video. You were like Rambo. You had the knife in your mouth. You jumped out of the tree and stabbed the deer, man. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Although wasn't you, <laughs> come on man you need to do that <laughs> I, I i wouldn't be against it if it's deer season you know i'm not i'm not against it <laughs> my daddy always tells a story man he my wife's grandfather so my great grandfather you know and this was in the 70s and he was he was in his 70s he lived until in late late 90s and died like 92 93 they were out hunting and um I think they were like squirrel hunting in Louisiana, you know, and this big turkey crosses their path and he starts popping off of that turkey. My dad's like, it's not turkey season. He's like, it is now, bam, bam, bam. you know, he, he could probably get away with it being 70 something years old in the seventies in Louisiana, but they'll string you up in California if doing something like that. <laughs> yeah, here, here it's the water. You can get away with it most things you know they're pretty lax here in tennessee we call it the great free state of tennessee uh i was able to buy a gun without even having to show my id you know here you know um and i know that would trip people out it was very small you know wasn't relaxed guys um but uh where they really get crazy is the water you know you don't don't mess up the tennessee water supply they and they will go to war with you over the water here so I guess they're not doing fracking there. <laughs> well, I think the problem is that they actually did do a lot of bad things to the water. I know there's like yeah. an arm thing and there's a nuclear plant not too far that they keep quiet about. And so I think they're trying to reverse a lot of things. And so they're very, very sensitive about the water now. So what do you do for internet out there? Are you on satellite or do you have a good feed? You know, craziest thing, and, you know, I don't really believe in coincidences anymore, uh, but we actually have gigabit internet out here in the mountains. You know, nice. our, our little, I mean, I mean, our town is so little, this little town that I'm in. So the one I was talking about with five restaurants, that's down the road. You know, that's that's the big city, you know, where we live. We only have three restaurants. There's no stoplights or anything like that. We really only exist because there's a state park five minutes away. And um, they won some grant and got to install fiber optic Internet because of uh, a little like there's not even a hospital. It's um, we were 20 minutes away, 28 minutes for an ambulance to, to arrive on our property. So. We're very careful about anything that we do when we're here. Um, and so anyways, yeah, they, they won some grant and we have phenomenal internet. So that's awesome. Yeah. We moved here. You know, my town is Murrieta and like nobody's heard of it. We've got a hundred thousand people here, but we border Temecula. Everybody knows Temecula because the wineries and stuff. So, yes, yes. you know, right here, the, I mean, they literally just butt up to each other. We're, we live right on the, on the border, but outside of both. So we're in the county. I mean, there's 220,000 people right here. Mm. Right. But we moved here at the end of 04. This was one of the first cities that Verizon Fios came to. Mm. So, yeah, I've had fiber to the home, you know, for 18 years. Yeah. Um, so that's been awesome. Uh, cause yeah, you're up like North central, like in between like Knoxville and I'm trying to look here, like, well, Winston Salem, right. Or, yeah. Um, so I go grocery yeah. shopping in North Carolina. Oh crap. 
Yeah, because it's just you know it's it's really it's it's fifteen minutes either way, and yeah. I just I just like the one in North Carolina, and it's also just cooler to say that I go grocery shopping in North Carolina. Yeah, I go grocery <laughs> shopping in another state. But, but yeah, we go, we go up there to Ingalls. Um, yeah, that's our grocery store around here. We got a we got a Kroger, we got a Food City. Ingalls is like the. Spot. You have a Piggly Wiggly. No Piggly Wiggly. Damn man, do you have a Waffle House? Yeah, we do have a Waffle House. Yeah. All right, I'm coming. <laughs> you should have said no, then I would never visit you. But if you got a Waffle House, I'm coming. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> so the kids are cool with it, because like, dude, I I'm looking at 111 acres in Maine, and my daughter was like. What would you do with all that land? I was like, I could pay cash for it. And I don't know. I'd watch YouTube for a year and learn how to farm. I mean, like, we're not dumb people. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, I thought I would do that, too. Uh, I wish I would have bought a smaller piece of property. Um, a local reminded me that our yards are as big as we make them. And that helped me a lot because I was trying to tame all 16 acres at once. Yeah. You don't have yeah. to tame all that. <laughs> right. Right. And so, you know, we just try to tame, you know, like uh, three quarters of an acre and that's something manageable. And so I wish I would have bought something, you know, uh, I had these huge dreams of what I was going to do. And really, if you have one acre, you have enough land to grow all the food you're going to need, you know, three mm -hmm. acres, you're going to do phenomenally well. You're going to be able to have pigs and chickens and, you know, you'll, you'll be fine. So 170, 17 acres, you know, what would be cool about that, you know, knowing what I know now is, um, you know, I've been looking into timber investing and that's a great retirement plan. Uh, wood, you know, if people buy wood, people need wood, they got to build things, you know, and if you have the right trees on your property, if you've got black walnut, whew, you're good. You're, you know, and this is something that like, the realtors aren't thinking of, you know, most people are not thinking of like what species of tree is on the land. You know, they're thinking of how big is it? Is there water that runs through it? Is there power? You know, the standard real estate things, but they're not thinking of what species of tree. And so me knowing what I know now, I would be looking at lots of lands based on what species of trees are on that land because if you got black walnut you're you know you're you're good to go you're you're gonna be retired i mean one black walnut tree could be five grand to ten grand just cutting down one of them so if you've got acres of black walnut you're, you're gonna be solid for a long time what about hemp hemp yeah you hemp, look into that yeah hemp's a whole new product and uh it's good it's viable you know i think there's Depending on your state, there's some uh, regulatory issues, you know, but uh, hemp is a good is a good product. But I think there's a lot of great natural products, you know, like that, you know, that there is uh, like we have these things called locust trees that I never heard of. But locust trees are even more sturdy than cedar. You know, I don't like to cut a locust tree with my chainsaw because it's like cutting through metal, you know, mm. A locust tree, you, you can uh, you can build something out of a locust tree, and I promise you that thing will be here a hundred plus years later. That that it, wood is like it bugs don't like it, mold don't like it, you know, chainsaws don't like it, you know. It is uh, so yeah. There's like if you really kind of get a little geeky about nature and, and different products, um, look into mushrooms. You know, mushrooms is a I think mushrooms is the new superfood i think it's already starting i think people are starting to get hip to mushrooms mushroom powders and it's it's fungus guys like it just spreads it grows itself like you don't all you got to do is turn the lights off and it grows you know it, it, you don't have to be this fabulous gardener but it sells for like 20 30 dollars a pound you know and uh so yeah uh mushroom i hate mushrooms i eat <laughs> almost anything in the world I'm not All a fan right. of mushrooms, but All I'll right. grow them. I'll grow if it makes money. I'll grow them. I'll make my whole house mushroom. I'll turn the lights off. <laughs> yeah, and if you get into some of the more rarer kinds, you know, uh, there's there's a lot of so yeah, there's a lot of just amazing products. And the cool thing is, uh, so like just to geek out a little bit longer, I know we're like throwing some people for a loop here, but my we're we're kind of creating a little bit of a worm farm, which I know is really really weird. But 
mealworms. Uh, every pet store needs mealworms. Chickens love mealworms. If you're feeding mealworms to your chickens, you can, uh, they become, depending on, there's a lot of science, but like basically, depending on the diet you feed your chickens, you switch from just regular eggs to what's called like omega-3 eggs, which makes them like super healthy eggs. Um, and so, you know, there's a reason why to have a worm farm. And it's actually like what I say is like, all you got to do is throw them a carrot every once in a while and they they're that's it like that's the maintenance and they just multiply their bugs you know they just multiply and multiply and multiply and so there's a, a lot of really really cool natural products out there that are incredibly profitable um and it's just nature it just does its own thing you don't really have to do much to it have you ever heard of stink bait stink bait i've heard of stink bugs i haven't heard of stink bait so my, that same great grandfather, so he had his own, um, wasn't a worm farm. It was just a big wooden case, you know, kind of like a, about like a deep freezer. Okay. Right. And, just, and it was up on stilts so he could tend to it and just open it up. And yeah, he'd throw just bread on the top and the worms just come up. So he would use those for fishing, you know, and lived in Baton Rouge. He's a big fisherman, but he loved, he loved catfish. Uh, he, and I don't even know what he made it out of, but he had, he had a little compound, you know, they had like a little, maybe half acre parcel, like right in downtown old Baton Rouge. So he had his little one story house and he had this garage, a long, long garage slash workshop and an apartment, a two bedroom apartment above that. And my, so his daughter, my grandmother lived there and my mom was raised there. So this little property when he would make this stink bait and dude, it just like half the neighborhood smelled it and he would make it in the balls and put it in the sun, let it harden. And that was the bait he would use to lure in the catfish. Cause they just, they loved it. And uh, I need, I need, I need to Google it and see what the hell it was made out of my mom. She was laughing. She didn't, she didn't know I remembered that. Um, but worms, and stink bait. <laughs> yeah. We've got multiple types of worms. We got red wigglers and we got mealworms. And people think it's crazy, but it's it's kind of cool. Like when you get into the science of it and how oh, yeah. it, and you get over uh touching them and there's ways of you know keeping them clean and everything like that, and not having to touch them and this stuff. But it's it's actually like I've run the numbers, you know. There's a guy on Amazon doing 500 k a month, 500 k a month with worms. You know, there's a guy selling ladybugs that's doing crazy numbers. I'm telling you, you know, don't don't sleep on uh, these little natural products, man. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna delete this part of the interview. We're gonna keep this between us, okay? We're not gonna tell the whole world how yeah. how to survive, <laughs> not for free. We got to charge for this, man. Right. <laughs> right at the end, I'm gonna say, now click the donate button, and I'm gonna give you the secrets on how to live through the Holocaust, which is coming for the rest <laughs> of the world. The nuclear fallout. We're gonna survive uh crazy or, that's good stuff man i uh hey i want to do some of the same stuff my wife thinks i'm crazy but um well she's right but i'm not wrong to be crazy <laughs> right right yeah. just because you're crazy doesn't mean you're stupid that's fun <laughs> you know i mean you know uh i think we can get lost in it all i think we can take it in the wrong direction and and, and i think we can get crazy but if we just, you know, treat it a little bit lightly and, and fun, you know, I mean, it's the kids love chickens. Every time you bring somebody over, you know, people love like, can you let the chickens out? Can we go see, can we go feed the chickens? Oh, um, for sure. Know, having, having four fresh eggs for free every day, you know, is, it's, it's nice, you know, and knowing that they're healthy. And so it's just fun and it's, and it's valuable. And like, if you really get into it, it's, it's actually really, really profitable done right. Yeah. Yeah. My dad's got a few chickens. I was out there and he just lets them out in the morning. They roam his property. He's got an acre and then behind him is, is just wooded and they just roam and he'll, he'll come out. He calls them. They're just like, like dogs and cats. They come back. He throws the feed out and they just let themselves back in. He just has to close the gate at night. They're back See, in we're, there. We're internet geeks. We have automated doors you know, with timers and sensors. <laughs> and so it's like, they just, they, they feed themselves, water themselves coming in and out of the door by themselves. Oh, and, that's uh, awesome. We just go out there for fun and toss them some seeds and stuff. So yeah, he gives them some little treats. These little, I think they're like dried worms actually. Now that you say it. Yeah, um, and um, he's like, 
you know they're they want to be picked up with because they'll squat, right? Yeah. You go out, go out to get one, they're running away, like don't chase them. But as you get close, if they squat down, they're like, okay, you can pick me up. And and they are, they're cool. I mean, they'll they'll love on you. <laughs> you can scratch their neck. <laughs> Uh, good stuff, man. Well, I'm going to link out to your business. I'm going to link out, um, where are you active on social media? I know you got a, you're doing, you were doing a little experiment on Instagram, right? Is that still running? I am. I need to be better on my Instagram. I've gone through phases. Uh, we, we grew a page to 24,000. So it's, it's, it's decent, you know, uh, it's not yeah. bad. But I've kind of stalled out a little bit on that. Uh, I need to pick that back up. Facebook is where I'm most active. I got a bunch of free stuff on YouTube. If you if you Google me or I guess you YouTube me, you know, I don't know. Yeah. You know, but yeah. And if you like any of that stuff, then come on over to Ad Skills. It's only 20 bucks. You'll love it. Okay. Sounds good. All right. I'm booking my trip to Tennessee. So get ready, man. You, you never should have done this interview. I would love to have you out here, man. We'll have a good old time. Uh, uh, I love my son. He he was he got a scholarship to to Vanderbilt, but uh, he took another opportunity to another school. But we flew out there. It was years ago though. But um, yeah, I love I love the mountains. Love the country. So cool. A great cool. free state. I'm Very nice man. Man, too, man. So I'll roll. We'll we'll get that done. You did you say you're doing jujitsu? I used to. So you'll probably. You know, you'll probably just squash me like a bug, but uh, I used to do jujitsu and uh, Aikido back in the day. Oh, now it's really on. <laughs> Get the mats out, baby. It's All on. Right. All right. <laughs> I, wrestle, I wrestled with Brunson. Yeah. Yeah. So, he was, I'm he's a legit wrestler, wrestler, huh? Yeah. Did, did he wrestle in college? Uh, Is that right. I yeah, but somebody told me, you know, uh, when I when I worked with him, they were like, oh, if you really want him to be your friend, wrestle with him. I did that once and once only. That dude is crazy level strong. You know, he's way stronger than you think. And then you think you're like, oh, OK, I'm prepared. No, there's there's something to wrestler strong. That dude threw me around like a rag doll. I'm never wrestling with him again. They are interesting. I mean, I, I've sparred with a lot of wrestlers. And, and I've seen some videos like wrestlers are great at takedowns. You know, they're very, they're very explosive and forceful, right? But they're not, they don't have submissions. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So if I know somebody as a wrestler, cause you know, in jujitsu, like you can just basically sit down, right? <laughs> and depending on the rules, as long as you make contact I can grab your sleeve and I can sit down, right? you know, and, and now you don't have that that violent takedown where I might get hurt. Now I can use my legs and everything else and start manipulating joints. Cause that's where wrestlers, they, they've got to learn the submissions. Cause once they learn submissions, they're already comfortable on the ground. So then they're just super deadly. Yeah. See, you I know? did everything wrong. I ran up behind him and tried to put him in a full Nelson. Oh no. And it did not go my way, man. <laughs> oh no. Well, well, that's just, I remember seeing a video years ago, Jocko Willink did it and a guy was interviewing him and he owns his own gym and, and he's, and the guy had never trained at all. And Jocko said, I'm going to lay down and close my eyes. He's like, don't jump on me. Right. I mean, don't like, like master Ken stomp the groin and restomp the groin. Right. He's like, I'm going to lay down and close my eyes. You approach me any way you want. And the guy's like, no way. He's like, no, you do it. And, but people, they don't understand. It's like, a, it's like voodoo. It's like, it's like a dark art. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome okay, cool man, man. Well, would love to have you over man all right i will make some plans so you stand by uh all do right. you travel at all you like traffic and conversion and things like that uh we're kind of got this six hour circle you know and if it's in the six hour circle if we could drive there in a half a day then then we'll do it but if it's outside of the six hour circle it's just not for me right now oh dude i'm saying i've been that way a long time <laughs> i'm not even a six hour i mean I won't. Somebody invited me to LA a couple weeks ago. I was like, no. They invited me to Vegas this weekend. I'm like, mm, no. Yeah. It was going to be a five hour circle, but Myrtle Beach is six hours. So I was like, all right, let's make it a six hour circle. <laughs> uh, will, will any of your people be uh, at Traffic Conversion? Like, are you, is the company like doing events and things? Not this year. No. Okay. Cool. All right, man. I was going to take my one last shot. Maybe, maybe see you. Because it was it was a few years ago. Y'all had a the booth and you had like a coffee, coffee thing downtown. That was cool. Yeah, 
Yeah, now yeah. we're just uh, growing ourselves with Google ads and social media. Yeah. Okay. Cool, man. Justin Brooke, all the way from Tennessee, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, dude. See you, brother. So go to donate.thesalespodcast.com, send me some money, and I will live stream a grappling session with Justin on the farm. Okay, we're going to be chasing chickens. We're going to be grappling. All right, and, and you can be a part of it. And I'm only halfway kidding. Um, but I do look forward to going out there and seeing him. I haven't been to that part of Tennessee. Uh, I've never been to North Carolina. Got a good buddy in Charlotte, so it's a good excuse to head out there. Uh, but I told you, Justin's a good dude. Just laid back. Um, you know, he has nothing to prove because he is known. He has already proven it. Um, I love his ten dollar uh, program. I hope you understand now the differentiation between Google, you know, intent advertising and interruption advertising. Um, I love his one ad, one page, one goal. You got to tighten things up. Most pages are, are too busy. He talks about that, right? The, the people visit the home page and like, what the hell? Let me go to the about page. Try to understand what this is all about. So make sure you have a good about page. Uh, make sure that you have um, a good home page. And it's hard, right? I'm helping a client right now. It's hard. It's hard to dial it in. Um, it's, you know, the old adage is you can't read the label from inside the bottle. So you're not alone. I hire people to help me. So everyone, I think, except Bubba Watson on the PGA Tour has a coach. So he's an anomaly. The pros are pros because they have coaches. They have somebody helping them look from the outside looking in. If you need help with sales and marketing, hit me up, okay? Go to thesaleswhisperer.com. Hit the Contact Us page. You'll get a link to my calendar. We'll talk. See if I can help you. It's what I do. Thanks for listening. I'll go sell something. <laughs>